How are you feeling right now? If you're like most people, you're probably feeling slightly bothered, upset, a little bit rattled. There's something not quite right about what you just saw. What about now? That sense of mild discomfort is gone, and you're now feeling more disturbed, ill at ease, even angry. You're pretty sure that what you've just witnessed is unfair at best and a grave injustice at worst. It was, in a word, wrong. Throughout recorded history, humankind has grappled with this duality between right and wrong. This universal concept is found across all cultures, languages, and belief systems worldwide, and is so fundamental to our psychology that we often don't think about where it comes from. While we often say figuratively that we can tell the difference between right and wrong in our hearts, an emerging scientific consensus suggests that this process may instead originate in our brains. Our brains are divided into left and right hemispheres by a canyon-like gap known as the longitudinal fissure. Sitting on the inside of this canyon, just above the corpus callosum connecting the two halves, lies the cingulate cortex. The frontmost part of this structure is known as the anterior cingulate cortex, and it is here that a key player in our sense of right and wrong appears to reside. Studies using advanced neuroimaging techniques have consistently shown that the anterior cingulate cortex becomes active when we sense that something is wrong, whether this is a simple mistake like a misspelled word, or a deep moral wrong like a robbery or theft. For example, back in school, you likely spent the first few weeks of each new year automatically writing the old year out of habit on your homework assignments. Your anterior cingulate cortex was involved in recognizing that as an error, and then prompting you to take action to fix it. Simply put, the anterior cingulate cortex helps you turn something wrong into something right. By localizing this process to a specific region, we can gain a deeper understanding of what happens when this part of the brain becomes dysfunctional. In fact, a number of psychiatric conditions are linked to abnormalities in the anterior cingulate cortex, and knowing about this region can help us to understand these disorders better. One of the conditions that is most clearly linked to the anterior cingulate cortex is obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD. People with OCD are not only more sensitive to sensing that something is wrong, but also seem to have trouble turning this wrong signal off. To use the same example as earlier, imagine if, even after you had fixed the year, your brain continued to tell you that there was a mistake, making it hard to settle down and move on to the next task. This is what happens in OCD. Someone with OCD may feel that their hands are dirty, causing them to go to the bathroom and wash. For most people, even a few seconds of hand washing will help them feel that their hands are clean. For someone with OCD, however, the overeager anterior cingulate cortex will continue to sound the alarm that their hands are dirty, and no amount of hand washing will convince them otherwise. This traps people in a loop in which they spend hours each day washing their hands, preventing them from doing anything else and making it so that they never feel clean. In this way, dysfunction in the anterior cingulate cortex directly sets the stage for a cycle of distress and disability. Anorexia nervosa is another condition that is linked to a hyperactive anterior cingulate cortex. Due to health concerns and social pressures related to obesity, the anterior cingulate cortex generally sees having a few extra pounds as something wrong that needs to be fixed. For most people, this is overall a good thing as it provides motivation to eat better food and engage in more exercise. For someone with anorexia, however, the anterior cingulate cortex isn't able to shut off properly, so it never stops seeing their body weight is wrong, even when they are at or below a normal weight. This sets up a cycle of restricted eating and excessive exercise, leading to unhealthy amounts of weight loss, sometimes to the point where people end up in the hospital or even die from malnutrition. Through this, we can see how powerful the anterior cingulate cortex can be, especially when its wrong signal does not turn off when it needs to. While OCD and anorexia show what can happen when the anterior cingulate cortex is overactive, problems can emerge when it becomes under-responsive as well. People with psychopathic traits appear to have reduced activity in the anterior cingulate cortex, 
especially when lying to or deceiving others. In one study, prisoners were given a game to play. If they could guess the results of a coin flip correctly, they would win some money. However, they were allowed to record the predictions privately, giving them the opportunity to cheat. The results were striking. Reduced activity in the anterior cingulate cortex was correlated not only with the degree of psychopathic traits, but also with how quickly they engaged in dishonest behavior. Without the anterior cingulate cortex acting as a watchdog for wrong or immoral behavior, it's easier for people to act in a way that violates the rules of society. Ultimately, a concept as complex as right and wrong cannot be boiled down to just one location in the brain. There are many interconnected regions involved in error recognition and moral decision making. And while the anterior cingulate cortex plays a prominent role, it is not the only factor. In addition, it would be a mistake to conclude that the anterior cingulate cortex determines what is right or wrong. While this region recognizes when something doesn't meet our standards of rightness or correctness, the specific things that cause it to become activated differ from person to person, with cultural expectations, spiritual beliefs, and personal values all determining what gets coded as right or wrong. From studies on OCD, for example, we know that someone raised in a religious household is more likely to develop intrusive thoughts about blasphemy, while someone growing up in a neat and tidy house is more likely to develop obsessions about orderliness. In this way, we see that the anterior cingulate cortex doesn't make the rules, it just enforces them. Still, knowing about the role that the anterior cingulate cortex plays, as well as its potential for dysfunction, could potentially enable us to better treat the conditions associated with it. While research in this area is just beginning, some studies suggest that direct surgical treatment of the anterior cingulate cortex could be an option of last resort for people with the most severe forms of OCD. With more research, treatment for other conditions may follow. With time and effort, we could begin to see additional benefits that come from knowing where right and wrong live in our brains. Thanks so much for watching this video. This was the third video that came from the poll I posted asking what topics people would like to see here, so subscribe to be notified of new videos or to vote in future poll. Also consider checking out my books on Amazon to do a deeper dive into some of these topics. In the meantime, I hope you learned something new and fascinating from this video. Bye for now.